Theo Sultan here. Thank you so much for tuning in. So it's really good to be back. I haven't uploaded in a while. I'm gonna start, you know, uploading on a more regular basis now. So we just renovated the shop. It looks great. And I've never really posted a solid video about crystals. You always see me wearing them. I'm all over the place. Uh, but I've never really taught about them or shared about them. So in this video, I just kind of like to go over what they do. You know, why you should work with them. What are some applications and uh, some other tips and tricks and techniques that I've kind of picked up on throughout my, my days. So when people usually go to the crystals, they're usually looking to fix something. Whether it's physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, even sometimes soulful. I'm going to be showing you guys how to give crystals jobs. And if you're following along and, and you're you know going as I... And you're using the crystals as I explain. Something I'd like to really point out before you begin. Is when you're giving a crystal job, be very specific and tactical in your wording. This one time I had a crystal, it was, I think it was a Starburst Jasper. And uh, Starburst Jasper is also known as a script stone. It's very good for, you know, old records. Think of like back in the times of like Jerusalem, like way back when, um, just old, old knowledge and wisdom. Um, it also helps with many other things emotionally and spiritually. One thing that drew me to it was being able to be calm, peaceful, and centered. And on the description card of the Jasper, it said, uh, giving you the ability to remain calm and conquer any and all obstacles that may come your way. So I thought, oh, conquering of obstacles, that sounds that sounds awesome. I want to go and buy this. So I picked up a stone. I gave it a job of assist me in overcoming challenges and great obstacles. Okay, and then I put it in my, uh, my medicine bag. So <laughs> not, even, not even 10 minutes it goes by after I charge it and put it in my bag. And I start getting some of the worst lessons ever. Like, I just kept making just, like, just stupid mistakes. Like, just common sense things. I just kept making these mistakes over and over and over and over again. It got really bad. I'd make a mistake, my teacher would correct me. I'd make a mistake, my teacher would correct me. And each time my teacher corrects me, they're both lovely teachers. But after a time, you get a little bit impatient if it's the same mistake being made over and over again. So it was getting really bad. I think after about the fourth time of doing it and correcting me, uh, Tenderheart says, you know, Theo, what, what's going on? And I'm like, I don't, I don't know. And she's like, what are you wearing? What's what's going on with your crystals? And so I told her about my Starburst Jasper and what the jobs I gave them are and do, 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 do. And she's like, well, that's your problem. You gave it the job to overcome obstacles. So now it's manifesting obstacles for you to overcome. Oh, man. So after that, I saged my crystal, cleared its job, gave it something else. All of those really harsh, rapid, frequent lessons stopped immediately. Moral of the story is these crystals are powerful and just to kind of be wise when you're implementing and using them because they are serious medicine. They do pack a punch. So let's just go over some very basic crystals here. All right now I have a red tiger's eye. So it's a little hard to see, um, but basically it's just a tiger's eye with a little bit more red pigment to it. And this crystal is great for grounding. It correlates to the root chakra, which has to do with your security, stability, all of that. What makes it different from something such as an obsidian, which is just grounding, is it also connects your auric fields to the Earth's electromagnetic field. So this helps you in grounding in a different way than your typical crystals do. So that's why I really like it. I think I even have a piece. Yeah, I have a piece in here right now, actually. So it's a really good crystal. Highly recommend it. And something you can do with it is you can keep it on the left side of your body. Put it in your left pocket. Put it in your left shirt pocket. Whatever it is. The left side is receiving. The right side is projecting. So if you have like a shielding stone such as amethyst or black tourmaline or obsidian, you put it in the right side because you want to project that shield, right? So that's what this is really good for. Is you just keep it on your person and it has that effect. Or if you're doing chakra work, you can do your your hand sign and then go into that 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 meditation or that that you know contemplation and the uh, mantras and all of that, the energy work. So hold the stone do your stuff. Next one here is Carnelian. Carnelian is really good. It's for the sacral center. Sacredness of self, honoring yourself. 
It also kind of gives you a passion, and enthusiasm, and a little bit of a kick for life. And a lot of people don't know it actually correlates to the root sacral and solar plexus, although the sacral is mostly what it's known for. Next up is tiger's eye. Tiger's eye really helps with discernment. Um, if you're if you believe you're being lied to or deceived, um, whether it comes from internally or externally, a tiger's eye will help. Tiger's eye pendulums are also very very good because it kind of gets to that truth of the matter. Think of like the eye of the tiger, right? It's like that that discerning, seeing through sort of energetics to it. It correlates to the to the solar plexus chakra, so it also helps with your determination, your willpower, and your passion. Next up is Malachite. Malachite is like a strong healing stone. Rose quartz is very is very lovey. It's very nice. It's healing. But if you want to get some healing done, you want to get down to business, I highly recommend a green stone, like a green aventurine or a malachite. Malachite, again, it's healing. It also assists you in um, being – helps with protection. I'll get back to that. Um, it also is good for motivation. Good for motivation. Motivation concerning your heart thinner. What are your passions? Maybe you have a project you're putting off and you don't want to have the motivation to do it. Malachite's really good for that. Um, a little bit of a, a really powerful combination is Malachite and Obsidian. Um, it's very, very co heavily correlated to the Aztecs or that really old, ancient kind of Mexican indigenous uh, culture was the you know obsidian and malachite. This is a powerful combination because the two together make this shield that's a little bit different. It kind of manifests you being out of harm's way, right? It's a, it's a little bit of a different shield. It's kind of odd how that works, um, but it's yeah, it's a bit. Oh, I mean, chills. Um, it's like a it's like a protection manifestation kind of thing. Next up is turquoise. Turquoise heavily correlates to you know Native Americans, the, again indigenous tribes of America. Um, it's deeply related to your ancestry. Um, it helps with protection, being centered, very healing. Um, it also helps with your communication. Um, so I remember one time I was working at a uh, for a retail, and it was Black Friday, crazy busy. I had on a black kyanite, um, blue lace agate, some other communication stones uh, bracelet on. And I remember as I had it on and after I charged it, I just felt very like outgoing and charismatic and bubbly and just kind of like really wanted to talk and communicate with people. And I was like, there's something going on here. So that's what communication can kind of do. And if you have if you have like a lump in your throat or you feel like you can't get something out or even if you have a sore throat, that all correlates to the communication center, the throat chakra. Because remember, it's a wheel of consciousness. It's not just energy, right? So if you have a sore stomach or, you know, you, you keep, you know, vomiting or something, you know, heaven forbid, um, it correlates to the solar plexus, correlates to that area of the being, um, that kind of thing. It, just, it goes really in depth with the psychology of energetics and all of that, which was for another time. But there's something to keep in mind. Again, it's very protected, it helps you be centered, healing, amazing. Next up is amethyst. People who are first getting into their spiritual practices, they're usually drawn to amethyst. Amethyst is a stone for the third eye. What makes it really nice is it also is a great shielding stone. Um, many times, um, Tenderheart has told me that you know some some clients have came into the store and they're needing protection, and they went to obsidian, it's not obsidian, they went to black tourmaline, not black tourmaline. It was amethyst. Amethyst was the was the choice and key stone. Because it helps to clear the mind, helps with your general thoughts, also helps the people who have addictive tendencies or addictive uh, negative uh, thought patterns such as OCD or other kinds of uh, ailments of the mental body, right? That kind of thing, amethyst helps to kind of smooth that out. That's what also makes it great for meditation as well. So again, protective as well. Again, I have a little bit of that in here too. So it's protective, it enhances your insight, clarity of mind, great stone. Danbrite. Danbrite is one of the ascension stones. Um, I think that one of the seven or eleven ascension stones. I can't remember properly. But Danbrite is all about light. It's light, 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 light. Um, it is, opens up your crown, um, your connection to creator, connection to source, uh, your holy guardian angel, whatever that is for you, your higher self even. It opens that up and assists your body in taking in more light. It's just like a light activation kind of thing. So these are the crystals. You can also do various things with them if you have a chakra set. So root, remember root, sacral, groundedness, sorry, groundedness, sacredness, confidence, 
loving, communication, turquoise, spirituality, oops, spirituality is amethyst, you have Dambrite is your connection to creator. So what you can do is once you get a chakra set, you can shake them up and you can just ask the question, you know, what are my energetics? Throw them out on the table and well, you can kind of discern what's going on here. So right, I have my root chakra right here is far away from my from my communication center. But my communication is also in alignment with my spirituality and my connection to creator. So there is this connection, a communication with creator that's going on. And while my confidence in my love to others is not very strong due to something going on in my sacred center, right? And all the way out here, what's going on, what's totally misaligned is my spirituality and my sacredness, right? Because the the crown and the root correlate, the sacral center and the third eye correlate, the solar plexus and the throat correlate, your confidence, your communication, and then the center is the heart. So if my sacral is a little bit off, that correlates to the third eye as well. So they're telling me, hey, man, <laughs> you got to work on your sacral center if you want this insight to become even stronger or grow and expand, right? So that's just something you can do with, with the crystal stones as a set, right? So that's the stones. Next, we have larger pieces such as specimens. These are much more powerful, and the bigger the stone, again, the more energy it naturally radiates. And there's also other variables. And the more juice it can hold, right? So, hmm, if you're doing like a ritual, a really big ritual, or you're doing a really big spell, or you're raising a lot of energy, or perhaps you're a Reiki healer, you can put a stone, a big specimen piece, underneath your your table where you do your work. And that will amplify the healing for the, for the client. Again, very beneficial. Next is you have spheres. Spheres are very well known for their scrying capabilities, or that, that insight helps you to see clearly, right? Images will start to appear or bubble up on this. It also is the whole picture. So if you're scrying, it's spherical, right? It's the whole picture. Another thing is if you look at the stone and apply that, so this is clear quartz, helps with clarity of mind, right? It's also manifestation, so it's manifestation and clarity of mind all around, something to consider. Again, these are just emanate energy in all directions. They're very nice, very nice. And so what you can do is for, this is selenite. Selenite is one of the few stones that cleanses and clears itself automatically. You get your selenite, you put it right in the living room, give it a job, give it a charge, let it do its thing. That's one, one use of it. Here's a selenite wand. Again, you can direct energy with it. Uh, for healing yourself or others, that kind of thing. Um, you can channel energy, channel light through the selenite wand to produce some kind of effect. Um, so that's what the wand's really good for. There's also, you know, pairs of crystals. These are two rose quartz hearts. If you're wanting to manifest love, you can do some kind of magic with this, right? Get up two pink candles, put the red rose quartz together each hour, bring the candles one step close together and the crystals. Another hour goes by, bring it together. Another hour goes by, bring it together, right? It's just that. Um, that's one thing you can do. Mm. If you want to deepen the love in a relationship, again, you give them a, the job, and you put them in your relationship corner. The relationship corner, feng shui-wise, is in the right, farthest right-hand corner of the room. So for us, that would be right there. That's our relationship corner in the shop. Um, but it's per room basis. So you put this in the relationship corner of your room, give the job to help you and your partner, there you go. Or even better, in my opinion, is you take one, hold it in your left side, give them the other one, have them hold on to it, kind of generates that, that link, that connection, that bond. So that's just a little something to do with the crystals. Now, you can take these crystals and you can apply them to magic as well. So let me go ahead and show you guys a little bit of that. Let's just take um, the malachite, for example. So what you want to do first, this is for your general crystal maintenance is you want to sage it first, or cleanse and clear it, and then give it a job. So I have here a sage bowl, you know, pretty standard. And this is just a little wire mesh heart, just something we have handy. And what you do is you get your lighter, right? Right, let it make it go nice and well. 
Remember, try not to blow on fire. Just a bad, energetic thing. And what you do first is you dissolve. So to dissolve, you move it counterclockwise. So for me, I say dissolve, dissipate, disintegrate, all shadow, negativity, and gray. Dissolve, dissipate, disintegrate, all shadow, negativity, and gray. Dissolve, dissipate, disintegrate, all shadow, negativity, and gray. Or if you don't have sage, you can run it under a cold um, faucet for, for 30 seconds with intention. And as I'm saying dissolve and dissipate, I'm visualizing that the sage, that the sage smoke is coming on as light. Okay. Next step is you want to bring in. So you move it clockwise. I'm going to say, you know, bring in creator's love, creator's light, creator's blessings from heaven above. And now... If I'm to hold this this crystal, I can feel it has like a brighter vibration. It feels more, it has a nice little hum to it, more so than before. So that's how you clear it. Once it's cleared, what you want to do is you want to get a book about the stone. This is one of the m more powerful ways I've seen of charging it. This is what Brave Eagle taught me. You get the book of stones. I have it right here. The Book of Stones, it goes really in-depth on Malachi. It tells you how it's made, where it comes from, the hardness level of it, and then it goes into the spiritual properties. And what you do is you hold the stone, left hand, right hand on top, and you're going to be reading all about the stone, and before you read that, you just tell the stone to take in the beneficial you know, words that you're about to speak to it. And as you read into the stone, you can feel its vibrations start to grow more and more and more and even hum, right? It's just something about the, the power of the knowledge that goes into it and also the amount of precise information you're giving it adds to its eminence. Now, another way to do it, another, again, more a very powerful way is to do it in a manner that which rhymes. Rhyming things for a spell or intention is a powerful powerful energy people greatly under uh, underestimate rhyming it's just this flow of energy that kind of just drifts through the astral plane and manifests much more easily than say a command you know bring money or or having it rhyme it, it's much much better it flows so much better so that's how you charge it after charge put it in your pocket boom you're done um another thing you do with candle magic so you get your candles, you get your candle, you put your oil on it, whatever you do, you carve in some symbols, right, pray on it, invoke, whatever it is, it's done charging, right? Now you get your money crystals. The, this is green adventuring. It helps with, again, it's very heart chakra based, but it also attracts luck, blessings, and abundance of finances. So again, you charge these crystals, give them the job to, man to manifest abundant financial prosperity or manifest $500 for you within the next so-and-so amount of time. Please and thank you, thank you, thank you. Always say thank you. And then say beginning here and now. Make sure you always say beginning here and now whenever you do any kind of magic because you don't want to manifest it 10 years down the line. That doesn't really help you. But here and now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So you charge your crystals, you charge your candle. Then... You simply just place your, your crystals in a triangle fashion, like this. Right, triangle is a very powerful shape, it's that, that balance. Place it in a triangle, then you draw an energetic line connecting each crystal. And what that does is it grids the candle. So as the candle is burning, that energy and the eminence of the crystals are going into the candle, and it just makes the magic so much more powerful. So... This is just a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of tips and tricks that I would love to share about crystals. Um, there's so much more to them. It goes into you know the astrological makeup. You can grid them together with um, Kabbalistic um, correlations and planetary whatnots. Um, this is just a little basic how to, a little bit about it for now. Another thing you can do is you can grid. Gridding is very powerful. That's what I kind of showed a little bit right now is you can grid your bed if you're having problems sleeping or you're having nightmares or you just want to heal as you sleep get some healing stones put them in the four corners of your bed right then again connect that energetic line between each one and just let it do its thing all right this has been theo soul 10 here i had so much fun sharing this information with you guys i hope it goes out and helps you if you have any crazy stories you would like to share about your crystal experience or anything neat or interesting i love 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 reading guys's comments again thank you so much for watching have a great one